I'm very clinical, so I think that's what I would do with it. Rather than like build the biggest roller coaster to make everyone happy. <laughs> Yeah, and lots of the answers were education and health, but but those are important. Those are important to a lot of people, you know. Um, and, and and Stephanie Shea said as well, and she's correct. Uh, she had uh, friends in from uh, Japan, I guess, that were uh, that had a situation at a convention where someone got sick and they had to be flown back to Japan um, because it wasn't uh, while they were in America, there wasn't a good way to, for them to pay for the medical assistance they needed, and it was uh, her, you know broken English response of uh, whoever the guest was, is like, it sucks to get sick in America, because like, if you're poor and you're sick, then you die. And that was, that was, that's the outsider's opinion. I'm like, that's not, that's not horribly wrong. That's, that's kind of Hi. correct. Yeah. Right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Yeah, Jason's had some, some medical issues, so he's like, boo, boo medical company. Boo insurance, that kind of stuff. So yeah, if you guys haven't seen Eaton in the East, check it out. It's a, uh, I believe it's 11 episode series and two movies that kind of follow it up too that would kind of make up a, you know, part two of uh, that. But it's really awesome. It's a very well done show. Yes? Okay, of any of the outtakes that made it onto the Blu-ray, what was your favorite? Which one? Uh, oh, for the Brotherhood. Have you guys seen the, the final Brotherhood? No, yeah, okay. no, who watches Brotherhood that hasn't seen the end yet? Okay, so that's it. Okay, I won't spoil anything. Uh, on on the part five, the the last uh, one that comes out for that, the uh, we included some outtakes that we don't normally get to do because uh, Japanese company don't like outtakes. They think that it's weird that we want to see mistakes. <laughs> like I don't understand that. Why do you want to put the non-professional stuff on there? I'm like, you guys have obviously never seen the end of Cannonball Run or Smokey and the Bandit because they're funny. Yeah. Um, of the ones that made it on, um, Maxie's Closer was the funniest one. That's why it's the last one, because it's the funniest. So The Shake Quake one, too. Most of those outtakes, um, Sabbaths were mistakes, and they're funny. And Sabbath just keeps talking when he messes up. He'll just start watching the screen, like, I'm just going to keep talking as long as the mouth's moving and just say anything. Um, but most of the other ones where um, something funny happened on screen, I'm like, okay, give me a second. Okay, say this. Well, so the, the shake wake one, for instance, I wrote that for Tatum real quick. He's like, oh, that's great. You know, we, there's several that we did like that, and like, ah, oh, that wasn't as funny as I thought. The ones that were really funny, we kept, so. And then a few of people just, you know, just really did come up with. I came up with the let's look at the door one, so. I like that one, too. <laughs> so, like, that's pointless. So, but yeah, uh, get part five of uh, FMA Brotherhood. Um, there are outtakes on there. It's very rare that you get dub outtakes because uh, Japan does not want them. Yes? Can you guys hear me like this, or should I keep using the mic? Yeah. Use the mic. Okay, I just didn't want to blast your ears out. Yes? Favorite character to voice act. Um, it's really hard to pick, because they're all my children a little messed up. Um, Roshi's probably the most fun. Um, and then there are always the fun challenges as well. Um, uh, Ritsu from Fruits Basket. And uh, Ronka from Oran High School Host Club were both a lot of fun because they're trannies. Um, and um, let's see, uh, Tybalt from Romeo X Juliet was a fun challenge because he's um, handsome and dark, and I never get cast as that guy. I get cast as goofy dude. So, um, uh, and like uh, Havoc, it's just kind of rare occasion. I'm like, oh, that guy is attractive. It's weird. I get to voice him. So yeah, Ro Roshi's the most fun. Uh, Buggy's a lot of fun too. So yes. Can you say anything in Roshi's voice? Yes. Anything. <laughs> <laughs> Android 18, let's go skinny dipping. <laughs> now. <laughs> I'm not kidding. <laughs> You're awesome. I want to shake your hand. I know. Don't. <laughs> Don't. You don't know back. where it's been. <laughs> What's that? I can't hear you. What? Yajirobi. Um. Oh man, when are we going to eat? We just ate. I mean, like again. My <laughs> guys, what about Super Baby Two? Super Baby Two? Um, I think it's just like, like painful throat stuff. Where it's like, um, Goku, I will destroy you. Hate Kakarot. 
<laughs> it's most of what Beatty does. Yes. What about Havoc? Yes. Havoc's like memorable stuff doesn't sound like Havoc, like the um, I'll follow you for the rest of my life, Mustang. Like, like that doesn't sound like most of his dialogue. Most of his dialogue sounds kind of a right about here. You know, it's just kind of like my voice. The the original inspiration for Havoc, and it's it's gotten away from that, but. In the first series, when I first started doing Havoc's voice, um, it was kind of my impression of, uh, there's another voice actor uh, named Damien Clark, and it was my impression of like Damien's I'm hitting on women voice. Because <laughs> it gets just like a little bit deeper and a little bit smoother. Hey, how you doing? <laughs> yes, Hawkeye, Havoc, Mustang, stuff. So yeah, memorable lines from, from Havoc don't sound like Havoc. <laughs> But it's fun. Yes, it's a quiet room now. Yes. Yes. What was the reason behind the dual voice cast for Green? There were a lot of things that went into that. A lot of consideration of, um, you know, um, what we could do with the series. Um, Well, here's, here's the thing, like, it was kind of a neat opportunity to do something that would still be canon, more or less, um, that would fit with the manga, but that wasn't exactly what the Japanese did. Um, several of the characters, when Reed reintroduces himself, don't instantly say, oh my god, it's him. They're like, you are? So, um, I thought it would be a little bit more of an interesting challenge. Um, and an interesting approach to it, to have someone else do the reincarnation of greed, where everyone's like, really? And you just have to listen to like the way that he talks, and when he talks about whatever else, we're like, oh God, it is him. Um, it's just, uh, yeah, there's, there's a lot of things that went into it. That was uh, part of the mindset, though. I mean, I could list off uh, several reasons, and there's several like non-disclosure type reasons that I can't list off. But uh, in the end, we have something fun and interesting that uh, wasn't done in the other incarnations, but that's not incorrect. So. It's a different body, yeah, I mean like, um, we have um, Lust, uh, and uh, hopefully I won't spoil this for a lot of folks, I, I'm not going to spoil the ending, but if you've seen any of it, you'll know these things. We have Lust, who didn't come back, right? We have Gluttony, who did, but it was very uh, specifically pointed out that he was, had his memories intact father tried to wipe out greed as much as possible and create a completely different one um, to bring him back with no memories and with father with the many things that he can do like stomp and cut off alchemy for an entire country um, I think if he was trying to make an inc as much of a different greed as possible that the voice wouldn't be something that he couldn't change he's like I want you as different as possible so all that's left is the core essence which is also another reason well, when he starts getting the flashbacks or whatever, uh, he's like, why do I see you in my mind, Raph? Why were you there or whatever else? And he, he even hears the previous voice. He's like, oh, God, that was me. Well, so, I mean, he, he even has the kind of personification that everybody believes God to be, you know, the man in the white robes. Right. <coughs> yeah, he's very Jesus-looking. Yeah. Um, at least as far as the paintings go, which yeah. are kind of incorrect. Jesus wasn't a honky. Um, <laughs> but... Uh, yeah, that, that's my thing. Like, as, of the many things that father can do, you would think that, like, if I'm going to try to make a, a different greed as possible, wipe out the memories, wipe out everything, and put it in a different body, the voice would be something that he could easily change. So, um, it carried. Uh, it also helped carry on the for people who haven't read the manga and who haven't seen the series. There's another 10 or 15 episodes of wow, it's different, and then oh, it's the same dude. Like, you don't have that reveal if it's just the same dude doing the voice. It'd be like, I guess it's him, and he just doesn't remember. You know what I mean? Like, you kind of add a little bit more suspense for the whole middle chunk of the series, so. Yes? Um, any idea when the new Full Metal Alchemist movie is coming out? I can't hear you. Any idea when the next, uh, the new uh, Full Metal Alchemist movie coming out in uh, North America? I think they made an announcement that we uh, licensed it, and I think they also made an announcement that it would be like February-ish, as far as uh, uh, some theatrical dates. I'm not sure about the... I can have it in my hot little hands and watch it at home, you know, time frame, but I think it's going to hit theaters February-ish. You guys excited for that? You've seen oh, yeah. some Milos? Mm -hmm. 
Yeah. You've already started recording, right? What's that? You guys started recording the movie yet? Yeah, we just started on Milos. In fact, um, Vic is uh, joining me very soon to record a lot of hours of uh, Milos. So. so why not an earlier release? What's up? Why not do an earlier release instead of February? Because that's well, <laughs> we have to like record it, you know. Once you guys are finished, like, it, like even the week after. Well, the, the week after we're done. Um, well, there's uh, there's a lot. The, whenever you're done recording, there is about three to three and a half to four months of cool before it can go anywhere. It's like go through uh, and um, tweak out all the audio. It goes through a mix process. Go through and make sure that all the you know the pictures correct. There aren't any frame dropouts, or there's not any little grainy stuff. And go make sure that all that stuff's tagging up. Um, and there's like you know compression of audio. Of like here's what the mix sounds like, and here's what it's going to sound like for people's house, you know, home systems or whatever else. And go through and tweak all that stuff. And then the, you know the DVDs and Blu-rays have to be authored and tested, and make sure there's not a glitch where you push a menu button and you know something else happens than what it's supposed to, and all that sort of stuff. It just takes a long time. So. Yeah, um, it depends. Like, um, uh, there hasn't been, like, as, as a, for instance, there hasn't been a Shiki cast announcement yet. It's, like, done. Like, it's, it's, we finished all 22 episodes of that. But the problem with cast announcements and stuff like that is if you, like, if you talk about it too soon, then it's like, yay, when's it coming out? A year and a half from now. Ah, oh, <laughs> my excitement dwindled. <laughs> So, you know, all these things are timed out and, you know, it's, 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 it's actually for your, you know, it's for you guys' benefit. Um, I think, uh, like, when I was a little kid, what's, what's Ron, does anyone know Ron Howard's fantasy movie? What was that, his swords and, um, no. Uh, Willow, Willow, that's Ron Howard's fantasy movie. Willow was starting to be advertised like two years before it came out. So this was like, Willow! When you started seeing like commercials for it on TV, you know, because I'm not young. I saw it when I was a little kid. Um, and it was like, when's it come out? When's it come out? When's it come out? And I forgot that the movie was even going to come out by the time it came out. And, and in fact, I just didn't care anymore. I went and saw it, but I was like, oh, this thing. I was excited two years ago when I saw the trailer at Christmas. But um, yeah, it's, it's, you know, interest is all timed out. You know, it's all plotting and planning by people who have a different job than me that I don't know how they work that stuff. Well, so. For shows like, like the movie, The Star of Milos, generally, it's only the new characters we can't know about, but everybody else that was in the TV series is definitely yeah. that's, that's an easy to, a thing to assume, yeah, yeah, yeah. Everyone who's in that movie that was in the series is probably the same person. Yeah. yeah. In, re in recording Brotherhood, did you guys ever get any like deja vu of like doing it all over again? <laughs> um, we did, especially for those first um, like batch of twelve or thirteen episodes before the the Shingies folks um, show up, um, and with some of the actors and, and some of the cast, there was the you know, well, you changed the line, you did whatever else. I'm like, well, they animated it different, <laughs> or it wasn't right the first time. This is a lot closer to the manga. Um, but yeah, there were moments of like, oh, there, you know, it's it's uh, shot this way or it's done differently or whatever. Like, uh, like for instance, the the backstory of Ed and Al and um, you know and their mother, that's quick, you know, in Brotherhood. But on the flip side, like the uh, the you know, you get things like that greed wrath battle in, in the sewer, which is pretty awesome. And then you get um, the different style of animation for the uh, the Guardians of the of the fifth lab, stuff like that. That's pretty cool. Yeah. But there is some deja vu involved for sure. Yeah. 